All right. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another fabulous match of our Hollow Knight All Skills Tournament. We have reached the fifth and final round of Swiss matches, and so today we have a matchup between the wonderful Kali and April. Um, both of these runners have been 0 and 4 so far, so unfortunately they are out of contention for the top 16 bracket we'll be going into after these rounds. But both of them have mad room to get cool PBs. In fact, Kali got a PB quite recently. So we could be seeing some really interesting stuff here. In terms of commentary, my name is Herm. Uh, been around the block a few times, but always excited to commentate a great match. And joining me on the mic is my lovely, lovely co-commentator, Virgil. Thank you, Herm. Yes, hi everyone in chat. Um, thank you for tuning in to another episode of exciting Hollow Knight speedruns. And yeah, as Herm has mentioned, uh, it will definitely be, uh, we'll be very excited to see Kali and April's performance today. And we've got some exclusive info from Kali that um, they will be showing off some uh, interesting ways to approach some skips, including a low percent April go strategy. And we will be pointing those out as we go along. And just a few housekeeping things in general is that we are running this on one to two one and on simplified Chinese. So maybe expect me to have some wacky ideas in in case something random about Chinese comes up. Yes. But yeah. So other than that, um, important sort of notes is that in terms of PBs, um, April has a PB currently of 107.16. Um, seems that he runs mostly ILs, such as Path of Pain and such, um, and it's his first speed game. So he's a bit newer to the category, but definitely has worked hard so far. And then Kali has been playing for more like a year, very, very prominent randoer, uh, streams lots of rando, go check her out if you have time, um, but also got a PB of 54.18 just two days ago. and. That PB does have some improvable things, so hopefully both runners will at least get some HK glods and feel happy about their races. Even though their PBs are quite far apart, it's true we've really seen in this tournament that anything can happen. And in the end, you're also just running for yourself. You're running to see how well you can do. Yes, I think indeed. Virgil will be counting people down soon. Yep. Uh... Yeah, I'll do 50, that. 5814 is Kali's PB. Sorry if I said 54. Yep, the runner should be off um, really soon. And um, good time to remind, yes, indeed, chat is all cute. And look at all those cuties in the chat currently. Hi, Rixian. <laughs> okay, so we'll be starting in very soon. Um, right off the bat, it will be important to note a few things that we do in a one two two one King's Pass uh, that we won't do in a current patch King's Pass. Um, we are going to see a fun little pause to get early control and an inventory drop. So once we catch up with stream delay, you'll be seeing that happen. Um, but for now, we're just sort of waiting, lounging around, enjoy the peace and silence before the storm that is going to be this race. And it looks like they're off. So, yep. We're going to see that early control real soon. Best of luck to both of the racers here. Yep. And you'll notice real quick they do have a load normalizer on. It's set to 2.5 seconds. The reason that we do this load normalizer is because people have many different kinds of computers with different load times. And so this will allow the times to stay somewhat synced throughout the race so that you can watch both racers um, go at it. And we do use load list time in Hollow Knight speed runs to prevent somebody's quality of a computer from, you know, helping or hindering their given time. So it looks like April did miss Vengeful Ifogo, which is about a two second time loss, but it's no big deal. And we'll see a sync from Speed Gaming. Shout outs to Speed Gaming as always. Yep, especially shout out to uh, Lynn Sundry as our awesome volunteers. There were a bit of delay today, but everything worked out just fine. And uh, as Kali is approaching the first door, welcome. If you've never seen Herm and I con before, we're going to be doing a knock-knock joke here. Herm, do you want to start us off? Yes. Knock-knock. Who's there? Bellfly. Bellfly who? Bellfly away, that's why I knock. Oh no, I better go get it. 
and that um, is the original knock knock joke from Slorent. So shout outs to Slorent for writing that and always always send us knock knock jokes if you think of any. Yes. And yeah, as the two runners are now dropping down into um I almost said the wrong crossroads area, <laughs> unfortunately. This is a speedrun, so no talking to Elder Bug, uh, Elder Sad moment here. And this next room is going to be the first RNG instance that we see. Uh, there might be some brothers where, as Kali has demonstrated, the runners can bump into on their way down. That is one uh, boop for good luck for both runners. So I guess they're still on the same page. <laughs> yeah, Crossroads uh, has various points of RNG um, that are just sort of a little bit annoying. It's the type of thing where if you're running this category just sort of for your own PB attempts, you're probably going to reset if you do something like miss double spike as Kali just did. Um, but both runners have what I like to call the single spike. They get one Aspid and so they are able to go and head into this cycled room. But overall, the crossroad split is very practiced because you have to do it in pretty much every category the same way. Um, and so you also have to do it every single time after you reset. So these runners somewhat have it down to a science, but Kali will take a heal here as being on two masks is no fun. Yep, and um, as these runners are navigating through crossroads, it looks like April is taking a heal here as well. Um, wow, going back to full health, uh, we're just... Benches aren't real, we are just going to take a heal and move on there. <laughs> uh, they will be saying hi to the first boss in the game, the very not real knight. I would like to say the real knight is a myth, so we are going to be fighting false knight, but we're only going to be giving him several high fives before leaving because we are not interested in his geo nor his city crest, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so back there you saw both runners go for something that's a little bit of a swag strat, call it Statue Pogo. Unfortunately, they both missed, but those are just some of the little micro-optimizations or things that look cool that you might see people go for in this run. But as Virgil said so eloquently, we're going to give False Knight a high five, but we're really giving him 21 high fives as we need to hit his armor 13 times and then slap him eight times while he's down. And so after this, we are going to run away and run into the Ancestral Mound, where we are going to be picking up the very first of many skills, the Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, definitely. And as this is a all skills run um, for people who need a general refresher, that means all spells, all upgraded spells, and all the movement abilities and all those fun stuff. And the nail arts. Um, yeah, nail arts as well. Speaking of nail arts, this is the one area where the runners will have to manage their geo a bit carefully because on one to two one, we do get to get scammed by nail masters very early on in the game. Yeah, those first fifteen to twenty minutes of the run are just sort of going to be very focused around geo management. Somebody is noting, um, Kali has slightly more geo, and while that six geo difference might seem like pretty negligible at this point, it actually can add up over time. Um, just having better geo collection can save you a lot of grief when we need to do things like farm some hoppers under the guy, the gaze of primal aspids in the kingdom's edge. But for now, we're mostly just focused on getting out of mount. We've both picked up our vengeful spirit, and now we're going to go on sort of this little walking tour of the ancestral mound. We're not too interested in being here, but the snail shaman essentially makes us. And so we're going to be hopping around doing some slashes, like hitting those double planks. Kali does miss that, unfortunately. Um, but getting around and we're going to reach the painfully RNG-based Elder Boulder. Yeah, definitely. And um, as Rixian is in chat once again, shout out to Rixian for always keeping track of our time. What an absolute legend. Um, um, they're about currently nine seconds apart. Kali got, I believe, a fourth bit. Third spit. Third, okay. Yeah, and April got about the same, so... Man, the RNG yeah. is not looking good for both runners today, unfortunately. April struggling a little bit with that boulder rolling around. Um, it seems both runners here will take a bench. Um, fair to do, it's just a free health refresh. Um, we're going to be quitting back 
to Ancestral Mound, um, but it sort of depends as there's also a hard save there. So we're going to be heading out um, and up towards Green Path. Now this second boulder on current patch is identical to the first, but on 1221, there's a exploit we can do in which we sort of run off screen and use our cowardice to kill the boulder in one hit. Um, and this will just allow us to get through a quicker and not have to worry about the RNG we saw for the first time in Mound. So here's this trick from Kali coming up. Whoa, Herm, I would yeah. like to consider this as a specific strategic retreat. <laughs> and um, <laughs> as we see, Kali's gonna demonstrate here. Unfortunately, um, misses the first fireball skip. And yeah, as the runners have recently obtained the Vengeful Spirit spell, it allows them to stall themselves in the air and give them a bit more momentum to execute, ex execute these air skips. Um, looks like both of them missed the first one, unfortunately, but that's yeah. no, not too much of a big deal because uh, there will be two more coming up and those will be a little bit more important as they allow us to skip a huge section of Green Path. Yeah, so as a brief explanation of the fireball skips, essentially you're looking to turn around and that, that fireball is going to give us a little bit of a backwards push, which is just enough to let us fake having a dash. So as you can see, Kali's going to be entering this room here. He's got full soul. Um, you can do this skip with fewer fireballs, but she has three if she needs them and she decides to use all three. That is a great fireball skip, really good execution there. April doesn't have enough to get three fireballs out, so we'll see if he can do it with two. But that's essentially what we want. And that second fireball skip, there is a backup using a squit or a mesquite, as Virgil likes to call it. But unfortunately, April does have to go for that, and it does lose a pretty significant amount of time because you have to sort of get the squit into position, and it's pretty finicky. Here's the third skip from Kali. Three firewalls, and she gets it. Yeah, and um, as Kali is moving on to the next screen, there is a little bit more of soul management that we have to get through in this next room, where essentially there is a tiny boss arena, and we're going to need... Uh, at least two to, um, you would like to have three hits, well, not three hits, so three fireballs here as Kali is demonstrating so that we can basically slap the Moss Knight once and then greet him with three fireballs. There you go. Yeah, and on April's screen, you will notice that um, did not even attempt the third fireball skip, simply resolved to go for what we call, some people call it man pogo or dude pogo. It's a backup strat that has you Pogo that husk as it falls down towards you, unfortunately missed both times. Um, so that will definitely put April somewhat behind as he also takes two heals and has to gather a lot of soul. But for Kali, Kali's gonna be heading off to a second set of boss knights. These are sort of our all skills moss knights and we're gonna get a whole bunch of geo from them. Yep, and um, because geo isn't as much of a big deal in all skills, um, since we don't need to purchase the 1800 lantern, we will not be saving Zone and grabbing the shield from Wrench Viking. And looks yes. like uh, looks like Kali got a good Moss Knight RNG spawn on that one. Essentially, you will want the Wandering Moss Knight to spawn on the left side of the screen, so that you can fire both of them at the same time. Yes. Yeah, so it's really you really love to see it. That sort of a little bit of RNG is just calm. It makes that a, a lot easier. Um, and now we're going to be heading into the Hornet fight. Um, we like to just sort of bully Hornet into a corner as much as possible. On 1221, she has a combo stagger value of five. And what that means is if you hit her five times within a given interval, you don't space out your hits too much, she'll stagger very easily. And so that's what we're looking to do here with combination of nail hits and fireballs. Um, and we're just hoping that she doesn't jump around too much, doesn't jump into our face, and a nice double to finish the fight for Kali. Um, really good Hornet there, despite some jumps all over the place. We'll finish it out with a clean 853 cloak by my guess. And here comes April's Hornet fight. Yep, so the two runners are about one Hornet fight apart, and as Kali has just gotten their dash, um, they will be heading down into the fungal waste, to grab some helping hands. I am not <laughs> ashamed to use that button again. Virgil, you will you will swear by that button for the rest of your days, won't you? Yep. 
I apologize in advance, but that's just how it do be sometimes. I suppose so. And speaking of things that do be, April really do be on one mask, um, showing off those fury strats without fury, as we like to say in the business. Um, let's get a nice pogo on the needle throw. Seems to be really taking things slow, not going for that damage rotation super tight, but is able to stick out the fight, and so you love to see it, because a death in green path, really detrimental, one of the worst places to die. You have to go all the way back, redo all the fireball skips, you still don't have dash, it's very slow. So good that april is able to escape with his life and now here Kali's gonna be heading into the fungal waste doing a lot of drops through this leg eater room um and we'll head out towards the helping hands as virtual likes to say <laughs> yep and uh Ritzian in the chat pointing out that two runners are about one minute apart which the 43 second increase is mostly from um april missing that um uh, those two fireball skips, plus the additional heals that he might have taken. Yes, absolutely. And so at this point, um, you're going to be able to see a lot of fungal waste from Kali. Fungal waste is somewhat of a fan favorite around runners who enjoy doing movement because you get to do some really interesting things by having dash and not claw. You can slide down some balls and then Coming up real soon um, in the room Kali is hopping into, first she's going to grab some Geo from these Amblooms and Rocks, and then she's going to head down and do the Explosion Pogo. And Kali uses the low percent setup, which having watched a lot of low percent runs recently, I can tell you it's very interesting. It uses a dashless setup. Um, Kali has expressed that this is simply easier for her, uh, even though many consider it to be much harder. You have to get right up there and make sure the spore is all the way over where you want it to be so you can pogo it twice. Almost gets it that third time. Yep, we're almost there. Honestly, just big respect to people who run low percent because without a dash, I don't even know. Um, so many boss fights just become you putting faith in the Radiance and um, having the manpower to go against someone nailed to uh, swords without a dash. Yes. It is very, very tough. It's a very punishing category, low percent is. Um, and just overall dashless movement is very odd. But thankfully for Kali, she can just sort of pull this one trick and she can use her dash for Mantis Pogo, which she is struggling with a bit. It's a very, very finicky trick based on just how those Mantis youth tend to behave, but does get it. Kali may not be happy with a fifth try E Pogo and losing some time on that Mantis Pogo here, but still remains solidly ahead at the claw split as we're going to see April do a more standard sort of two pogos e pogo setup. Yep, looks like April um, was going for a reset there and might be pogoing, may, might be striking the second nail strike a little bit too early. And yeah, it does um, does take some damage, and we'll decide to go around. Technically, it does not. It Epogo saves a really massive amount, amount of time. You lose about 40 seconds by going around, but if you're just not getting it, you're on three health and you're just worried about things continuing on, um, especially with Mantis Pogo coming up, it can be the right choice, even if it's losing a lot of time. Um, and so unfortunate that April's forced to do that, but hopefully it allows for a cleaner Mantis Pogo and a comfier latter half of the split. Yeah, definitely. And... Um... I mean, sometimes anything, any time loss here is going to be still better than a death and having to run back. So I'd say that's a pretty good choice, especially since also uh, we should point out that neither of the runners are watching the stream. So I'm not sure if they know where each other are at and um, they might not adjust their strategies accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. And oh boy. April will have to take a heal here. We'll see. Yeah, he's going to go around. Um, we'll go for this backup on the Mantis and then go around fully. That also wastes about 15 seconds. So this has just been sort of a tough um, ball split for April. Really dancing with this Mantis warrior, trying to get enough soul to get a heal off. Um, but on the other scene, screen, you'll see Kali vanquish Grusmother quite quickly. Um, she only has 95 hit points. So not too much of a task, but now we have to clean up her kids. And Kali only has one fireball to do it, which is a little uncomfy. 
but seems to get five of the eight first try, which is pretty good. Yep, and um, April decided to like drop down off the platform once again to get a little bit of Geo. He might be going for like an extra bit of Geo, so he will save some time on later Geo collections, which I'd say is a pretty good strat, but I don't want to calm curse. So maybe <laughs> Herb, how about we start anti calm cursing? Is it time? Yeah, I think I think April will run out of Geo immediately. Will not hit seven. Will not hit eight hundred before reaching Oro. Um, will fail on all levels. But it looks like, according to Rixie, and that gap has widened significantly. The runners are about two minutes apart, with that gap widening about a minute in the fungal waste split. No surprise, really, just because of the fact that April wasn't able to get either of the main tricks and just struggled a lot along, along the way. But that is a missed shade skip from Kali, which is quite annoying because the issue with the shade skip is that it requires the setup of taking a death um, intentionally. And if you miss it and kill your shade, you're supposed to, you must do that entire death thing again. So it is definitely much worse than having your shade reset or give you a fireball. But hopefully Kali will be able to get the second try. And anti com curse, I hope Kali fails the shade skip again. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Virgil>. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> that was Shinky's I... Virgil. Nerve, I am I'm sorry. I uh I'm yeah, really, really unfortunate for Kali here. Um does still have a significant lead, but this will sort of um take the gap down somewhat. Um Let's just hope she can get this on the third try. And yeah, April finishes off Gruz Mother. Gonna have to see if any of that Geo gets stuck in the ceiling. That can certainly be an issue sometimes, um, but looks good. Has enough fireballs for the cleanup as Kali does get the shade skip. So we'll be able to head into the blue lake and April has an okay cleanup, still has two left after those fireballs. Yep, and Blue Lake is definitely a um, slightly more chill area and a reward for runners to calm their nerves. And I would like to apologize. I know Kali is not watching the stream, but Kali, I'm sorry. <laughs> Kali, if you're watching this back, we are most sorry. Um, yeah, chat seeming to find solutions such as don't have comms or comms should not talk about the race. Um, that would be an interesting discussion to have but i think for now we will continue to choose talking choose to talk about the race um as april will attempt the shade skip for the first time and Ali is going to go down into the right side of the city of tears um and this is a split sort of we're going to be basing ourselves around um right side city for the next few minutes of this run because we need to get a lot of geo as you can see Kali's collecting with that shaman stone vengeful spirit um and we're also going to be needing to do things like kill the Gorgeous Husk to get 420 Geo, run over to get our Dash Slash from Nailmaster Oro, and then go into Soul Sanctum from the Watcher Spire. So it looks like, according to Rixian, um, Kali lost 53 seconds of her lead in that sort of Shade Skip or Vengeful Spirit 2 segment. Um, and that really just does attribute itself to missing Shade Skip multiple times. It's just an unfortunate thing. Yep, and as uh, Herm has mentioned before, this is going to be a big Geo collection part of the run as Kali is heading into the Gorgeous Husk fight. There is a tight damage rotation here where the runners will be looking to push the um, Gorgeous Husk around the room with their newly upgraded um, and empowered Shaman Stone Vengeful Spirit spell and hoping for that double hit. Yes. So really good Gorgeous Husk from Kali there. Um, they're gonna quit out and head over to the King Station bench that she took very recently. Um, and from there, we're going to be seeing Kali head down into the Kingdom's Edge. Let's see how she looks on Geo right now. Um, got 752, that's very comfy. You're going to see Kali, be, Kali farming some hoppers. Hoppers have 50 health and drop um, 16 Geo a piece and we'll probably be farming more than what we need because it's nice to have a little bit of extra geo going into soul sanctum as we're going to need it to buy the king station stag later but with the comfy geo that she's got kali must be feeling pretty good on that level um april on the other hand will be heading into gorgeous husk 
and he has had more geo troubles this whole run so we're gonna see where he is after that as your dear commentator herm is not a math brain person that is okay herm um and yeah as uh, April seems to have a little bit of trouble with the Gorgeous Husk fight as well. Looks like he's back onto the rotation, which is good. And Kali's going to be looking to... Well, he's uh, they're done with the Geo Collection for now. And yeah, Kali we'll actually stick has in a, straight a really... 800. Yeah, that is exactly 800, right? Yeah, so that is an interesting choice. A lot of times runners will choose to do a second row of hoppers simply for the fact that it requires them to do fewer amounts of geo farming um, in the King Station split. However, we absolutely respect Kali's choice here. Um, they can choose to farm from whatever geo sources are comfy to them. So in the end, having 800 geo is all you need to do these lever skips. And as long as you get another 300 before you hit King Station, it's no big deal. Um, and it looks like April has 758 geo, so should be really, really fine. Even if, even if he does only one row of hoppers, he'll have more than enough. So overall, Comfy geo wise for both runners as Kali picks up her dash slash. Yep, definitely. And I believe the extra geo that April got were mostly from uh, killing the Mantis warriors in the tribe. And now that we have dash uh, da dash slash, um, <laughs> this since this is all skills and the one two two one has a neat trick where we can hit some lever through doors as we see. The runners demonstrate really uh, quickly right in the second. Uh, Kali will be heading into the Watcher Spire and accessing Soak Sanctum this way. Um, there is a background object pogo here that runners do, dev intended. Um, and Kali gets it about first one and a half tries. Um, <laughs> pretty good. And yeah, there is a uh, another lever through wall skip here for especially one two two one, and it allows us to skip fighting a uh, uh, a husk sentry, which is definitely very pog. Yeah, it looks like Kali had a little bit of trouble in that room. That room is completely dark because when we lever skip into it, it has not loaded in, so we just sort of have to go by memory there. But there are a few times you can use your nail, as you saw Kali doing, um, to reveal where you where you are in that room um but she gets through just fine and we'll head into soul sanctum we're really gonna be interested to see if they elect to take a heal here simply because with two masks heading into a split known to have enemies that can sort of fly into your face that's probably not where you want to be but elevator heals are basically free um so we'll see no they have not chosen to take one yet um we'll we'll look at them through the future but april gets his dash slash and will head into the Watcher Spire area. Um, and we're just gonna sort of keep watching, but it looks like our time update from Rixian, the runners are a minute and a half apart. Kali has extended her lead by 15 seconds through the last split. So we're just gonna see how Soul Sanctum goes for both here. Yep, and uh, looks like April is having a bit of trouble or choosing to clear out the flying sentries first, um, which is a good idea. I definitely respect sometimes because those things can get really annoying and hit you for a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, April is a little lost in the dark room as well. Um, yes. And we see Kali has just gotten their own lovely Shade Soul, which absolutely obliterates uh, the boss health at this point in time. Yeah, Shade Soul is fantastic. It's going to be our bread and butter in Soul Sanctum. The reason it's so great is that with Shaman Stone, it does 40 damage on a single hit and 80 on a double hit, which is sort of when the Shade Soul knocks an enemy back enough to do an additional hit of damage. So it'll be really great. Um, and people are mentioning sort of the potential of a comms curse in Soul Sanctum. Virgil, I really just think both of these runners are going to take a death in Soul Sanctum, don't you? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, just look at, look at them. Uh, getting their shade souls and you know, <laughs> not they're just preparing. Them. They're preparing to die. Uh, uh, but yeah, Kali cleans up that soul warrior there. That's a 200 geo that we're going to be using to buy that King Station stag. Um, sort of an example of how efficient those double hits with shade soul can be. Uh, but now we're going to be heading up into the larger part of Sanctum. Thankfully, our lover skips allow us to skip what we call Hell Room, which has three of these soul twister enemies. 
Um, and they keep us away from a lot of the pain that is Sanctum. Yep, definitely. And Carly was able to, I mean, avoid the Soul Twisters better nicely. And yeah, there's the Lever Skip to avoid Hell Room, as Herm has mentioned. And April is getting their own lovely Shade Soul right now. Yes. So you see from April's side that wall cling storage on the door. Wall cling storage is something you'll see in a lot of optimal um, strats involving doors. It basically preserves your dash momentum um, into a room. So it's really helpful sometimes. But for now, Kali will take a heal as April picks up Shade Soul and Kali's going to fight Soul Master. Now, Soul Master is very much designed as an early to mid game boss. Um, there is a quick kill, but it's quite precise. Kali isn't really going for it here. But we do use those soul jars outside of the fight to get extra soul, allowing us to use our Shade Soul. But Soul Master is going to melt pretty quickly here with some doubles. Yeah, there's the first phase all done. Indeed, and... Um, yeah, we're just gonna have to let Soul Master scream a little bit right there. After, after that, we'll deal with his uh, faked death self. On the second... Um, there is a pretty consistent way to beat Soul Master on the second phase but we're just hoping soul master don't play it too mean by giving us extra attacks and yeah um april was heading into the fight as well yep so that's soul master for kali that second phase only has 100 health so it pretty much dies right away once we can get soul master to stop diving um but she will pick up her desolate dive here uh, this is a, an ability that we're going to upgrade pretty quickly after this split, but also an ability that we're going to use um, for movement to get into Crystal Peaks because we don't buy Lantern in this category. So that's pretty exciting stuff for all of us. But for now, unfortunately, we cannot quit out of Soul Sanctum. It is a hard save, as we will see with several other abilities in this run. April falling into Hell Room. That is not what you want to see. Really uncomfy uh -oh. thing to happen to you. And oh! Just get sniped by that soul twister. We'll probably elect to use the soul jars um, in Sanctum to get an extra heal, or we'll not. Um, interesting choice. So we'll see April go into the Soul Master fight with two masks. Best of luck to him, or as Virgil and I would say, um, it, this is a certain death. What can we say? Um, but Kali will head out of Soul Sanctum and be looking for that that magical number of 300 Geo, which is what we need to buy the King Station stag. Yep, and uh, Kali is sitting at a decent amount of Geo right now, and I didn't see if April was able to collect those soldiers off screen with a Shade Soul, as he didn't start with enough. I believe, soul. I believe he did. Um, okay. So far, but we're gonna see. April is definitely going to die, as Virgil and I have said. Um, it's a stagger. Very nice. So there's the first phase for April, um, and we'll get to take a heal there. Going into three masks for the second part is pretty comfy. Um, should be manageable here. But Kali will save a grub. You love Yay. to see. Virgil and I are incredibly pro-saving grubs. Anti-killing Myla. Anti-dream nailing Marissa. Except for that one time Virgil did it accidentally. I'm really sorry <laughs> for exposing you like that, Virgil. Um, but no you'll worries. love to see the grub save. April's on one mask here. Uh, once again, we predict certain death. Oh gosh, no, Herm, don't speak so soon. Okay. I spoke. What can I say? You have spoken. Spoke soon enough. And here's Kali. Kali's gonna be taking that Water Spire bench. This is a very important bench, and it's the reason it is very, very tough to die in Crystal Peaks. Um, because we're gonna be quitting back to this bench all the way at the end of our Crystal Peak split once we grab the upgraded Desolate Dive, which is Descending Dark. And Dream Nail. We love Dream Nail. Can't forget about that. Oh yeah, shoutouts to Dream Nail. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. And, um, yeah, we see April picking up Desolate Dive and getting a uh, full Soul Jar once again. That is something that is really helpful in Hollow Knight is that whenever you pick up a spell, you do receive a full Soul, so allowing you to heal in some ways. And Kali is just about at 300, allowing her to purchase that stack station and allows us to head into Crystal Peaks, as her said before. Yes, so nice Geo count for Kali. After this point in the run, we're really not too worried about Geo because 
the last sort of geo source we're going to be getting is about 655 geo from the watcher knights um after we get out of crystal peaks in dream nail um and that will essentially save us for the rest of the run so we're not too worried from here but we are going to be heading to dirt myth we do not buy the crossword stag um unlike the current patch folks on some routes so we will be heading down through Dirtmouth and visiting our wonderful friend Myla, who you should not kill. Um, saying hi to her, appreciating her, and heading into Crystal Peaks. Yes, absolutely. And as Kali is moving through the section, um, April is going to free the crab as well. You'll love to see it. Um, Very good. And he will be also taking that bench soon and following Kali's step. Rixian in the chat is once again keeping time. And the gap seems to have widened by another 24 seconds. Um, so they're currently sitting at about 2 minutes and 30 seconds apart. Um, which is looking a little bad for April, but um, don't want to curse anything. A death can still change the scene dramatically. Yeah, especially a death in Crystal Peak. Um, unfortunately, just such a tough split to die in. Hello, Myla. We have much love for you and believe that you deserve life at all moments. Um, but we hopefully won't be seeing anything of the like, which means Virgil and I will immediately predict a death in Crystal Peaks to prevent one from happening. Um, and I see somebody in the chat shouting out Rixian. We would definitely like to shout out Rixian uh, for tirelessly timekeeping every single match in this tournament, pretty much. Um, and also shout outs to Rixian because he is doing commentary tomorrow with me at 9 a.m. Eastern. So definitely show up to that if you want to see your favorite timekeeper spitting some facts about 1-2-2-1 all skills. But for now, here is Kali heading into peaks. Yes, indeed. And, um, since we will have a lovely Vixian and Herm commentary tomorrow, people, please arrive. As I like to say before, people, it will be a very arrive. epic time. But yes, so heading into CPs, you can just sort of notice there are a few things to know about this split. The first is that everything is incredibly cycled. So you are going to see, I mean, you, you can watch Kali sort of minding these, unfortunately getting hit by these um, crystal hunters, crystal crawlers, not crystal hunters, sorry. Um, and sort of avoiding the lasers does have to take it slow here as uh, they miss the optimal cycle for this room, but they are able to take a heal. And that is the other point about this Crystal Peak segment is that in the same way that soul management is so important in Green Path, health management is incredibly important in Crystal Peaks. And the reason for that is that there are two optimal damage tanks you can take. The first is platforming to Crystal Heart. There's a damage tank cycle that saves something on the order of four seconds. But secondly, the damage tank you really want to be able to take is heading into um, Crystallized Mountain. There's an early control you can use with the Sending Dark that involves a damage tank, and that saves about 15 seconds. So these runners definitely want to keep their health up throughout the split. Yep, and as Kali is going to be demonstrating a dash slash in the air and stalling herself in the air here, um, fun fact is that um, whenever you dash off a platform in Hollow Knight, you do get your dash renewed and in this case, the dash slash and nail arts will stall you long enough for you to perform that second dash. Looks like Kali did not go for the underplat uh, there, understandable, as um, it is a bit risky and health is important, as we said before. But um, there is one more opportunity coming in the future, and <laughs> we'll be hoping to see some underplats there. Yes, most certainly. And it looks like part of the reason that Kali didn't do that underplat was because uh, they wish to gather some soul from that soul totem. Really hard to do if you're doing the underplat, uh, but the movement's a lot smoother to that totem if you go over plat. So having soul is something that's very hard to come by in Crystal Peak, and it just may be a comfier thing for her to take. Um, especially when she has this much of a lead, you just want to be focused on not losing it. April accidentally shade souling there, thankfully had enough soul to um, still get into peaks. But Kali will be going through these crushers, another very cycled part of the run. Probably my least favorite item of platforming in peak. Yeah, definitely. And there's another grub save. You'll love to see it as Kali really is do. heading into uh, one of the more uh, infamous dark rooms in the all skills run. And it looks like she 
is going for the uh, dash only thing here, which is a little bit quicker and a bit riskier than the crystal crystal hard method. Yes. And so that is that is a common strat dash dark room. Um, C dash dark room is something that folks learn if they if they enjoy it more. Um, but either way works as long as you're getting through that room without getting hit, because if you get hit, you're sent back to the beginning of and you'll probably have to reset it as those crystal hunters can be vicious. But now Kali is in mound on three masks. Definitely doesn't want to go below that, though two would still be fine. Um, and yeah, safely gets over here. We'll hit that crystal with the snail shaman inside seven times. Go break that door open. And then on the eighth strike, we'll charge up dash slash to do this early control trick here. Ooh, super slide. <laughs> <laughs> Very fun indeed. And that is C Peaks for Kali. They have made it out safely. The only thing we need to do next is to do the dream platforms and um there would be no more damage for her at least. Yes. And it looks like April tried to charge up a dash slash while falling, um, so as to be able to grab that lever. Unfortunately, it released too early, but we'll be able to head down here into the crystal peaks room um crystal peaks room crystal heart room there are a lot of crystal things in crystal peaks you have crystal hunters crystal crawlers crystal peaks crystallized mound crystal oh gosh crystal heart. yeah oh boy april is having a bit of trouble in the crystal heart room um this is somewhat dangerous as getting off cycle can really trip you up but it looks like he's able to take it slow and keep a good watch on things um but yes, continuing on also does not underplot, but probably wants that soul anyway, and makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it it is definitely a safe strat that is uh, commendable, and April has gotten C dash nonetheless. That is just a unfortunate instant instance of missing a cycle, and sometimes things can get a little jinkies. Yes, it can really turn into a Jinkies moment quite quickly if you're not careful. But thankfully, we do see an underplot here from Kali. These are the dream platforms. Um, really, really a painful portion of my casual playthrough because I don't know how to jump. Um, but it looks oh, like no. Kali gets through there quite cleanly and they're going to be quitting out right after receiving the dream nail. Um, and we'll go back to the Watcher Spire. Um, in terms of a time update from Rix, it appears the runners are about three minutes and 20 seconds apart with the gap widening by 48 seconds in peaks. And unfortunately, April is on one mask with these crushers. Um, we're just going to have to see how that goes here. Yes, gets through just fine. Thankfully, hopefully we'll save this grub as well. But that is a little bit of a scary moment heading into the dark room. Yeah, and looks like April will be opting for a safer strat to collect some souls on the crystal uh, crystal hunters and taking a heal yes. here. Nice one. And as Kali has made it out of the dream section, uh, we can finally save Quib back to the bench that we took such a long time ago on Watcher Spires and say hello to our first dreamer as well as uh, their guardian, the Watcher Knight. Yes, so Watcher Knights and all skills are certainly a little bit easier than, or a lot easier than typical fights you'd see um, in any percent or low percent, because we have both Shade Soul and Descending Dark, and we're going to be using Descending Dark as our primary form of damage. Um, but however, we do have to deal with some damage tanks, especially because we're sort of going to be working around the invincibility frames that Descending Dark gives us. Um, and that can lead to us taking some damage and things can get a little out of hand. But thankfully these guys die in two and three quarters D-Darks. So hopefully things go okay, but they can bounce. They can go all around. Um, yep, and get you, a little bit scary. Uh, a little bit mean on the Watcher Knight's part to be rolling a lot instead of just standing still next to Kali. For and sure. looks like an update on April's parts. Man, both of these people are at high parts. Uh, he was able to make it through the dark room without taking any damage, and we'll be getting that early control here as well. Kali just sort of inching back and forth, just sort of trying to get the one little hit that it needs to kill that last watcher and is able to do it. Um, thankfully, we'll be able to head on up. One mask is no big deal here. Um, 
As long as there are no incredibly spicy damage taking shenanigans, so yeah, um, we will be just fine heading into this fire because once we're in that dreamer cutscene, we have no need to worry about damage. Um, and yeah, we'll just be we'll just be heading down um, and going into beating up Lurian to destroy our first seal. Yep, and both runners will be in a dream segment. What a what a great way to. I'll be at this middle part of the tournament. <laughs> Absolutely. And so Kali will absorb Lurian, and we sort of have an interesting dreamer sync here as April enters the Dream Nail cutscene. Um, but yeah, it looks like Rixian noting that they're about four minutes apart and he'll stop posting, which is just fine. We can sort of see that Kali's significant significantly in the lead here, and both runners are sort of playing for themselves at this point. Um, and so, yeah, Kali gets the health refresh out of the Dreamer cutscene, and once again, Watcher Spire, as all Dreamers are, is a hard safe, and she's going to have to head down, and we'll head out into, um, the... What is... What was going on there with April? That was an interesting thing that was going on. Um, but we'll, we'll head out towards the Isma's Tear Skips. Yep, and Isma's tier is definitely a special part of uh, all skills and um, definitely a very hype segment as the runners will be performing a bike tunnel skip as well as two asset skips back to back. And Kali did mention that they will be taking a different approach to the spike tunnels. Instead of uh, pogoing on the spikes, they will uh, do a dash slash, which extends their dash just far enough for them to get to the end of the spike tunnel. So that will be very interesting to see. Yeah, this is going to be a really cool showcase. Typically, it's sort of just a pogo and a dash, but dash slash spike tunnel is absolutely viable. Kali expressed to us that it just feels more comfortable to her, um, even though it's a bit unorthodox. And so that's the cool thing about speedrunning is that there are a lot of different ways. And look, gets it first try. I mean, wow is the right strategy for them and that's what you love to see that's the best thing about speed running there are a lot of cool ways to do different things and whatever you need to learn you just learn and so really fantastic that kali has found their comfy strat um and can nail the spike tunnel like that and here's the first acid skip oh essence pog very lucky <laughs> that's a one in 300 chance um so kali is now blessed and gets through the first acid skip indeed and after the second acid skip, there will- oh, no, I, okay, I, I won't speak too early then. Um, yep, Kali's got it. Uh, we'll be hitting that horn there, looking for a early control where the bug will come and hit us out of our item receiving animation so that we can peace out a little bit early. And that is a death for April to the Watcher Knights. Sometimes those damage tanks can get a little bit risky. Yeah, it is really unfortunate. With certain RNG, like patterns can just sort of get out of hand. Um, we don't have full movement here, so things can be difficult to avoid, um, especially with them bouncing around a lot. And so unfortunate, but the nice thing about a death to watchers is that the bench is right there. Um, it's essentially a death you would see in a vanilla play. You just die to the Watcher Knights, you head right back up. It's a standard walk back. So in the end, this is unfortunate for April, but there are far worse deaths to take. Yep, and Kali is doing pretty good with the Rava room. Sometimes those Ravas can get very annoying and um, hit you multiple times, but looks like they have made it through pretty safely. Unfortunately, had to cancel their C dash there. Yes. April try to go for this swag, Dream Nail on the Shade. For those of you who may not know, Dream Nailing your Shade kills it instantly. Um, but unfortunately, did not get it. But thankfully, those watchers, we can de we can Dream Nail them as background objects at the beginning of the fight. So it allows us to fully get our soul gauge up to where we want it to be. And that's really convenient. You'll see April continuing to Dream Nail them as they wake up. But here, Kali's going to buy that basin toll bench uh, for us to quit out back to and head into sort of the Molurk trek towards the Broken Vessel. Yep, and 
Looks like April is playing a bit risky starting the fight on 4 HP, but he is handling hits, it though. quite well. Yes, with the Shade Soul. Hits. You can get triples on Watcher Knights. Um, well, oh, no. really unfortunate second death. I should not have commended things that were happening. I should have stuck to the anti curse guns, unfortunate. But April, thankfully, once again, it's right there. Did enter that fight on less than full health, so it was a difficult situation anyway. Um, but we'll just keep trekking. And Kali over here um, is going to head, and this last Molurk is just like a big soul totem, um, allowing us to sort of get all of the soul that we wish because it has 150 hit points and you can hide in a safe spot. And then this is Basin Skip from Kali. You can attempt it three times, and if you get it, third try saves time still, so she does get it. It's a really nice little clean piece of movement. It's deceptively difficult, but is able to get it and hop right up. Yep, a very swag strat indeed, and looks like Kali did not go for the safety strat of opening the shortcut. Uh, makes sense. Yeah, which is reasonable. I'm not sure if they're on... I don't think they're on PP pace, but this can still be a very good time for them. And um, yeah, Broken Vessel fight. In this fight, we'll just be showing out who's boss when <laughs> when they do the headbanging, which is, as I like to say, uh, D-Dark and show that our D-Darks and dives are better than the Broken Vessels. Yes, absolutely. And the Broken Vessel, a bit of a pushover with our upgraded spells, only has 525 hit points, um, and our upgraded spells kind of tear through it. We don't have to deal with any sort of essence farming, so you don't have to fight as harder for him, the Loskin. Um, and on the other screen, it does look like April gets three watchers successfully, so very good for him. We'll be able to head up Spire and continue through the run. But for Kali, she's going to be grabbing her reward for defeating the Broken Vessel, which is the Monarch Blues. And so from here, we're going to be seeing a quit out back to that toll bench that we took and paid for um, with our 150 Geo out of sort of the pool we got from the Watcher Knights. And we're going to be heading into what is widely considered the toughest fight in all skills, Hornet 2. That is right. She is back. She's back with a vengeance. She sees the Knight can dash and she's going to bring some tricks of her own. So get ready for an epic battle. Yes, indeed. And... Um... I think it's just pretty interesting to know that Monarch Wings does not a hard save, which is really good for the, our runners. Mm -hmm. And yeah, as Herm and I like to promote, why wait for Silk Song when you can be a Hornet at least three times during your all skill runs? Just join us, join the all skills cult. And it's um, so true. Yeah. It's very, very easy. Um, just like that. And Kali gets the, the look down right there. Those are some scurry look downs. You sort of just bow to the toll a little bit and it goes down significantly faster. And she will stag over to King Station. Um, we're going to see if she elects to take any sort of safety bench. There are a number of safety benches you can take. Currently, the bench is um, for now the basin toll. And we're not super worried about that because we are hard saved when we pick up King's Brand upon finishing the Hornet 2 fight. But if we, if Kali feels like she just like to preserve her lead and she isn't really on PB pace, she may con she may consider choosing to take the camp bench above the Hornet two fight, which would just give her a very accessible way to to reach Hornet two should she take a death. But if she feels confident or she feels like she's on a good pace, she'll just continue on without it. Yeah, definitely, and. Looks like April is also just gathering a bit of soul for the spike tunnels and acid skips, which is definitely respectable because the skips can be very tricky and the runners need to use a little bit of soul to get rid of uh, a horn that might be in their way. And looks yeah, like Kali absolutely. is not taking the camp bench, so you go. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta respect it um, because if you're, if you're on pace, if you're on if you're feeling good, if you're just feeling trendy, I mean, then why, why take, why take the camp bench? It does seem like Holly is significantly behind um, their PB, but they might just feel comfortable. They might just feel like running it out, seeing if they can get some some HK gloves. And so, that's really what you love to see here. Um, and 
she'll be starting this fight now. It is a pretty difficult fight, as Hornet Sentinel does have 700 HP, but we are able to get through it with our upgraded spells, and what you just don't want to see here is what you just saw, <laughs> which is the parry. Um, unfortunately, Hornet can parry our spells. It is quite annoying because it is a waste of our time, energy, and soul. Um, and it's just overall no fun at all. So hopefully we won't be seeing too many parries for Kali here. Yep, and on April's screen, they seem to have a... Um, interesting? Uh, they seem to have a little bit of difficulties with the... Uh, thir the second asset skip, but got it nonetheless. Unfortunately, the horn decided to not participate in our early access control. Well, uh, in this in this case, fortunate that the horn did not decide to participate simply because April is on one mask. But chat is noting that he got the spike tunnel first try, which is super respectable. You'll love to see that from both runners this race. And yeah, is gonna try to farm some soul from this horn. That can be a dangerous game to play. Um, their movement is quite erratic. And Kali has just gotten the uh, King's Brand, so they are officially a monarch now. Everybody shall bow down to them when they see Kali around. Absolutely, but Nerf pointing out that it was some tough RNG. Kali really was not able to get the um, doubles that they were seeking there. Um, and so while well, that's no fun, we will continue to zoom, and she's going to be heading back into sort of the chill part of the run, um, which oh, is the April. Cyclone Slash Flit. But on the other side of things, unfortunately, there is no chill available for April, as they take a death to the Raba room that Virgil and I were discussing earlier. Sometimes the RG can simply bully you beyond the nature of bullying, um, and you do respawn at that Watcher's Fire hard save. Really unfortunate to see close enough to a bench that it wouldn't be too much of a concern from there. But hopefully, without having to do any Isma skips on the way, April will get it from now. Yep, and this part of the run for Kali is mostly just movement based. Oh, it looks like April had a little bit of trouble with the elevator there. And um, yeah. We are going back to KP for Kali screen, so KP people, please arrive. <laughs> people, please arrive. I mean, this entire this entire split, it's a lot of sea dashing. It's a lot of just sort of gentle movement. Gives us sort of a breath of fresh air after the chaos that is fighting Hornet 2. Um, and before we head into the chaos that is Umu. Yes, absolutely. And so, yeah, once again, we do not say hi to Elderbug, as as speedrunners, it is more efficient to not say hi to him. Um, but we do Peepo Please Arrive in King's Pass, and head into this this little sea dashing through KP, and then up to Howling Cliffs segment. We're going to grab our Cyclone Slash, and then run away, because we really don't do much else in Cliffs on this split. But thankfully, April does get his shade, and we'll head into Basin on four masks. That is no issue, especially with the bench he will be taking here shortly. And really good to see that he's out of one of the most difficult segments of the run. Um, we'll be able to head towards BV and get back on his feet. Yep, you definitely do love to see it. And as Kali is here to say hi to one of the better nail masters who does not charge us anything to learn in nail art, um, this split is coming to an end but we will get our exclusive cyclone flash which the runners will use in the future as a way to drop down faster and gain early control from the well yeah you're gonna be able to see i mean one of the coolest things about all skills is that we use every single skill we get because we use all three nail arts for early control from the well um and these cyclone these cyclone drops are significantly faster than inventory drops as long as you time them correctly. So you'll be seeing cyclone drops actually throughout the rest of the run. Um, we'll see how much Kali chooses to employ them herself, but it will be definitely a tool that we use to help us zoom zoom as we love to do. Um, April, unfortunately getting kind of bullied by these Molurks, the RNG can be rather brutal, but is able to start heading up and doesn't get hit on that last part. So we'll be able to go to this sort of soul totem Molurk and get everything together. Kali, unfortunately, no, Kali, Kali getting through everything and is going to head towards Umu. Do you want to talk about Kali's Umu strat, Virgil? 
Um, yeah, sure. Kali has mentioned that uh, they will be using a more D-Dark dependent strat and it will be more comfy for them. They also did mention on their PB, um, they had a Umu 2 cycle. So if they are able to nail this one cycle here, it might even be a goal for them. I'm not 100% sure. And yeah. I'm, I think when they mentioned the D-Dark strat, it is the uh, very comfy strat that Valley has given the communities recently, right? Yes. So this is this is Volley's. Um, it developed on current patch, but I do forget who it was. Maybe it was Underline. I'm not quite sure. If somebody in chat knows, please let me know. Um, but Volley has sort of made a version of it for one two two one. Kali is one of two runners capable of who has so far pulled it off successfully in a race. Um, in that the other is Tipu, who we saw um, in a race last weekend. Virgil and I commentated. But this, this one cycle it has a different setup from the standard Shazel one cycle. Uh, and yeah, it involves opening with a descending dark cast, which is pretty cool. And April still on one mask using those fury strats, but gets through the broken vessel. Okay, good. It was underlined. Yes, so credit to underline for originally finding this strat on current patch. Um, and credit to Volley for adapting it for 1221. But let's let's hope that Kali can pull it off because it looks really cool. Yes, definitely. And um, April has just gotten their Monarch Wings officially ascended into the King's position and hopefully get um, a lot of good runs later. Yes, absolutely. And so you're going to be see you're going to see Kali lure Umu very carefully. We call Umu the R and Jellyfish simply because it can be quite mean, but Kali pulls off that one cycle quite cleanly. Thankfully, Umu did not do an extra attack and wasn't too much of a bully, so Kali was able to get through that smoothly, but really, really excellent one cycle there. Um, you'll love to see it. That is the comfy strat that she and Tipu and a few others employ. So big congrats, Shroom Pogs for Kali for pulling that off, as as they often do. They're very skilled at this one cycle. So you love to see a showcase of a strat like that go so very well. Yes, definitely. What a amazing job, and that earns them the right to visit Wanamon the teacher and absorbs the dreamer. Yep, so as I like to applaud every time, science is now dead. Um, goodbye, we will not miss you, and we are going to be able to head up, unfortunately, as with Lurian, as we'll see with Hera. It is a hard save at Monomon, so that Teacher's Archives bench that seems so appealing to us at the beginning is only there for safety. Kali didn't choose to take it. She knew that she had this one cycle down. Um, but we will be taking the Teacher's Archives bench now, as we have to go run a few errands picking up Howling Race and Great Slash. Yes, indeed. And um, since now that science is dead, as Kali is demonstrating there, helicopters now go downwards, which is why we, we decided to Employ I'm going to use these jokes a lot. And um, yes. yeah, now science is dead and so is literature in some ways for the people who are interested in the lore. I believe the uh, lore tablets in the archives area are ex uh, like short versions and summaries of, of Canterbury Tales. So if you are a old English expert, go ahead and check them out. And looks like April is taking the camp bench for safety there, which um, makes sense. Yes. And if Hornet 2 is a struggle point, it is an excellent strategy. Only wastes about 15 seconds. Yep. And um, as Herm has mentioned, we will be heading to grab a few things. And. Uh, on all skills, since we do have the Ismus tier, some of these uh, skips are not that hard anymore because acid no longer hurts. And as we see yes. Kali demonstrate there, there is a airwalk where, because uh, I believe TC Pasta uh, and TC Spaghetti designed that platform so that there <laughs> is a little ledge there and you can perform what is essentially dashing off of a ledge and then double jumping, even though it is it looks like visually one piece of ledge yes it is quite fun 
TC Chow or TC arrive with spaghetti, of course. But this entire great slash split is another fan favorite, simply because it is pure movement. We now have all of the movement upgrades in the game, so we're able to, I mean, with the exception of Shade Cloak, which we'll be grabbing towards the end of the run. So we're able to sort of move around fully, um, and we will be taking on what some call the green path of pain, um, certainly was for me, my casual experience. And heading over to Nailmaster Shio, who is, of course, the final destination of the wonderful Happy Couple run, um, in which you get Shio his man. But we will just be saying hi, unfortunately, not to Shio and his lovely, lovely love interest. We will just say hi to Shio, grab that great slash, and head on out. But April has been getting through this Hornet fight, attempting to do so. I really oh, no. <laughs> should not have said that. Um. <laughs> That was oh, yeah. that was textbook curse. Okay, April is gonna go into this hornet fight, immediately lose all five masks, and then just whoop de scoop. Um, <laughs> complete death. Nothing that he can come back from. Yes, this this will go absolutely terrible. But hope people calling Shio platforming in chat the path of paint. I really like that. But there's great slash for Kali. We quit back to teachers archives, and now we're gonna be heading to get our final base spell in the game, which is Howling Wraiths. Yep, and as April is heading into that Hornet fight again, let's hope Hornet is a little less mean today because last time, uh, from what I was able to see, Hornet really do be giving April lots of blocking, though. So yes. let's hope no parries this time. Um, and April is I choosing to use Shade Soul um, pretty much as his primary damage, which definitely is a viable strategy um some runners choose to use a combination of stage soul and descending dark so it is just interesting that that is his choice but of course what works is what works it's hornet too you gotta fight it your own way um but kali will be heading into overgrown mound which is the last of three mounds um and it's where we're going to be grabbing our howling race yep three is the magic number and before getting howling wraith kali would have to go through a little tiny arena, which at this point seems a little bit ridiculous because they are filled with squids and we are able to take most of these enemies Fly out with great slash. by using a great slash or um, shade soul in some in some ways. Yes, it's two nail hits. Pretty much any spell will melt them. Um, but they are rather annoying simply because it's an easy arena to do, but it's a hard arena to do quickly. There are many different setups, but Kali thankfully gets through it um, with only a few minor struggles. We'll use that Great Slash as an air stall. Um, very nice. And picks up Howling Wraith is able to get that spell, also a full soul refill. Um, and at this point, we're going to be lever skipping into Queen's Gardens as April takes another unfortunate oh. death. To hornet too. Yeah, you really, you really do not want to see that. But um, let's try anti cursing again. Um, I hope April doesn't survive on one HP. I really hope that April dies at least six more times to hornet too. Oh um, gosh, because you know that is clearly the best way to speed run all skills is just infinite deaths to hornet 2 or near infinite <laughs> indeed um but yes in terms of kali kali's gonna be heading into this queen's gardens to hera split which is definitely one where um health management and stuff is important simply because we've got to glide through all of qg and then do three rooms of dark deep nest which is deep nest where you can only see your character and you're relying on your muscle memory that's a nice d dark from april right there um but we go through the petra arena first which on this patch the mantis petra only have 40 hit points um the opposite of a shout out to team cherry for adding five on current patch and then we do this yeah. hazard respawn warp to get into the latter half of that platforming section without having to deal with it Yep, and Kali is officially almost in Dark Deep Nest territory. We just have one more long room to go. This parkour room can be a little tricky because there are a few Mantis Petras flying around and they just love throwing boomerangs at anyone passing by. 
which also yeah. makes me wonder where do they carry the boomerangs from but it nonetheless really uh, Kali is able to make it out unscratched yes it seems that april is having a bit of trouble with sort of just getting directions right on their shade souls might be misfiring a few um it is important to note that april's primary concentration is path of pain individual levels and other ils so it is kind of likely that they have a lot of experience with um boss fight with with platforming significantly less with boss fights but they are able to get through hornet 2 on their third try um and head on out interesting little stop of the c dash there unfortunate but we are able to get the king's brand on april side as kali is going through dark deep nest and uh looks like kali was able to make it through that room and as Herm has also mentioned before, you really don't want to be taking any damage in these dark rooms because they do respawn you at the very beginning, which is really unfortunate. Yep, it is quite painful, especially considering if you take damage and respawn, all of the spike pits have fallen out and you don't really have as much leeway. But Kali seems to be doing pretty well really close to the end here. Um, we'll just have to go and be able to hop up into Distant Village um, as April exits the Kingdom's Edge and Kali, yep, the last thing you want is to take a fall there. It can be very, very scary. Yeah. I didn't mention it for fear of the curse, but you're able to do this. And then we're gonna use this fun little shortcut into Beast Den by virtue of our full movement, um, heading up into the top of Beast Den, avoiding that trap bench and the cutscene that wastes a lot of time as well as platforming through more of Beast Den than we want to see. Yep, and this way we only need to fight one stalking devout and usually yeah, the standard setup if runners have souls is to do a D-Dark as well as a Shade Soul to quickly get rid of them. Absolutely. And so this is our third and final Dreamer, Hera. But do not get confused, we aren't done just yet. We need to head over to the Abyss to grab our final skills of Abyss Shriek and Shade Cloak. So Kali is not quite done, but she is done Dreamers Wise um, and will be able to head out of Beast Done after this hard save. Now, as you can see, coming up as she exits this cutscene, um, there is 250 Geo that she's going to need for DV Stag, and that will be it for the run. So let's double check if she's good. Should be good. Um, as the low normalizer kicks in for a moment here, everybody can say hi to our lovely Hornet. But yes, 279 is more than enough. We'll be able to head straight out as April heads into KP. People, please arrive. Yes, and April is able to take a short break from all the intense parkouring and boss fights, which at this point they definitely do deserve. And um, someone in chat is mentioning about how there will be a evolution of commentary curses. I remember one day I was talking to her and um, maybe the next step in our evolution is for us comms to be playing Hollow Knight side by side by the, uh, by the runners. And then we will influence what mistakes um, the runners make by uh, making mistakes ourselves. Absolutely. Let our own performance tarnish the runner's abilities um but for now we will just be peaceful onlookers to their performances um as Kali's going to be heading down into the abyss here it's a split that can cause a little bit of trouble because of the sibling climb now unlike true ending we do not have to do this thing over charmed which is absolutely terrifying but these siblings do double damage and their drift is rng based so it can be a little bit scary i will always quote my first ever co-commentator, Quacksilver, on saying that the sibling climb is incredibly momentum-based. If you start out and things are going well, then they'll go well. But if not, they can really go terribly. And that's the oh. Abyss door, so it's time for our second knock-knock joke. Indeed. Virgil? Knock-knock. Who's there? Isma's. Isma who? I'm... I... I am crying. I, I am... Yep, I... I am crying She's for crying. the amount of calm curse I have done today. <laughs> the Isma's tear. Virgil has shed Isma's tears, and that is our second knock knock joke. Credit to Sylvie, who I know was in chat at some point. I think they went to do some food or something of the like, but credit to Sylvie for providing us with that. And a friendly reminder to 
always, always send us your knock-knock jokes. We are actually somewhat running out just because we've done so many instances of commentary. So yes. if you have more, please let us know as we are very much interested. But Kali gets through the sibling climb with only one hit, which is pretty good. And we will be able to head down towards Shade Cloak at this point. Indeed, and April is having a bit of a jinkies moment heading yes, towards Monomon. I don't want to say anything because there have been instances of me calm cursing people dying right next to the Monomon bench or the arcade. There is a very, very cursed clip of Virgil wishing death upon somebody in this very room. Um, don't see that. I take Please. a death to the Uma that April just passed, but thankfully April is fine. Will, I presume, elect to take the safety bench, um, which really doesn't waste too much time in general. Um, and so, yeah, we'll take the safety bench. It makes a ton of sense in this scenario. Last thing you want is a death to Umu that puts you back up in Dermoth at this point of the run. But Kali grabs Shade Cloak. What you saw there on her screen was a quit out that allows them to load in faster, simply because of the way that our loadless timing, in-game timing works. Um, it just sort of allows us to skip the cutscene of the knight having a spa day with the void and head over towards Abishrik. Yep, and April is heading into the Umu fight. Looks like they're getting straight into position trying to set up that one cycle. On the uh, normal regular uh, variation, people will just be looking forward to using their Shade Souls to push Umu out of bounds. To the right side and looks like april is definitely going for that setup here yeah unfortunately it looks like umu is pretty low in this case um yeah struggles to get you need four nail hits for the one cycle unfortunately umu ends up just too low and is not able to get it a two cycle does lose 18 to 19 seconds um especially with those long attacks that you're seeing on april's screen um but thankfully it's a Gets a short attack here and is able to go, so we should see a two cycle in short order, hopefully. Uh, but Kali picks up a Bishriek. A Bishriek is the final upgraded spell. Um, oh, and a no. missed two cycle for April. That must stink. That is really unfortunate. Um, yeah, just unfortunate with the damage rotation and just having some difficulties overall, but should be very close. That three cycle should not be much of a deal at all. But Com Kali is now. Climbing up through the Abyss, now that she has a Bishriek, that's going to be our main form of damage against THK, but the Abyss Climb is one of those things where there are a ton of different strats you can take. It's one of the most popular individual levels in the game, um, and it's pure platforming. Indeed, and looks like Kali is making quite good work of this climb currently. Yeah, it could be a little bit bad as time when runners take a dunk into spikes because um, we are speedrunners, we do not land on the ground. <laughs> At this point, thanks to all the movement abilities we have, um, most speedrunners don't really touch their feet on the ground long enough for the game to register that as a like hazard respawn point, so sometimes taking a dunk can reset you all the way back to the beginning and the bottom. Yep, so thankfully a damageless abyss climb there is really just what Kali wants to see. I mean, she chose to, to go around, take it a little bit slow at the beginning to avoid that hazard respawn from really dunking on her. But April will absorb Monomon and continue heading on his way as Kali's going to be heading into the Black Egg for the final boss. I did see somebody saying that Kali would die 11 times to Shriek THK, and I can't agree more. How about you, Virgil? Don't you think 11 deaths is exactly how many Kali will take? Yes, exactly. I think we are just uh, filled with profit energy today, and that will happen. Um, check the clip that is in the future. It will definitely happen. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Kali will be heading in. We don't see any door storage shenanigans. There are a lot of fun nail arts and things you can store on the Black Egg door, but Kali will not choose to do so. Well behind PB, but likely just playing for a solid finish here. Now, fighting the Hollow Knight, we have Abyss Shriek, which is our highest damage spell and the second highest ability in the game, the highest would be Cyclone Slash with Pure Nail. So we're going to be using that Abyss Shriek to, we'll take that bench for a health refresh. You don't need it, but it's helpful if you're just seeking to get through. Um, we're seeking to get as many Shrieks in as possible on the Hollow Knight, um, finish them off, and get the acceptance letter for the lucrative job of containing oh, the infection uh... for eternity. Oh, her, yeah. 
do you want to enlighten some people in the chat who might have missed our last column about the job interviews oh, and yes. the interview process? I am convicted that the battle against the Hollow Knight is a job interview. Because if you think about it, you are essentially applying for the job of containing the Radiance. And you have to do this interview, and at the end you get the acceptance letter, which is absorbing all of the Hollow Knight's infection. And each screen is a question to you. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What do you think you can bring to this team? Any prior experience? All sorts of questions to be asked as we scream our responses in the Hollow Knight's face. And so that is why this is a job interview. And April will be heading into Great Slash as Kali gets to that third phase. Really, really nice here in terms of health and everything else. Yeah, gonna be able to go quite fast. We'll see if she's looking for... Sometimes you can get a scream skip if you're inside the Hollow Knight's head. Does not get it, but finishes them off a lickety split. This will be just around under an hour. Yep, a sub hour race run, hopefully, and you love to see it. So yes, GG's to Kali as April heads to the green path of pain. Yeah, and I love someone is mentioning in the chat that the Hornet fights are the other steps of applications. For example, it is the campus tour or the job tour that you will see sometimes and you will have to fill out online applications as to just the basic information before the Hollow Knight himself decides to interview you. Yes, it is a very complex process that involves running around all of Hollow Nest. But the good news is, Kali gets the job within an hour, uh, 59.57.02, very respectable time, especially in a race setting, um, less than two minutes off of their personal best. You really do love to see it. Um, so that'll be some excellent work from her. We will be calling them in for an interview once both runners have finished or if April decides not to keep going, but we're going to presume that he's still on the warpath until he decides that he's not. Indeed, and I will mark Kali as done for now, and yeah, our audio is switched to a post screen, as we had oh, just nice. gotten the Great Slash from lovely Nail Master Shia. Yeah, Colette mentioning that Kali really did want sub hour for this, and they absolutely get it, so it's fantastic. Um, pulling off a very nice win in a race setting, really overall a great deathless run. A really cool showcase of some awesome strats that she prefers so yeah we'll be we'll be excited we'll be excited to to ask her about how she felt about her race in a short order but for now we get to turn our attention fully to april's efforts as he heads towards grabbing how and race and looks like april did go for the art and gc dash there where um thankfully he knocked the jellyfish out of his way and into the loading screen Therefore, not taking double, double mask of damage there. Yes, very nice. Heading into Overgrown Mound, we'll see how this segment goes. It just is one of those things that, you know, isn't a really terrifying thing to deal with, but it just simply can be rather, rather annoying um, and rather difficult to do quickly. So we'll see how this mound goes. Um, for sure. Yep. Um... Oh, April taking a dunk at the spike there. Um, and trying to line up the squids so that one spell can finish them all. Yes, we'll see here. Overall, we'll be fine. The nice thing about this um, segment is that you can take as many heals as you'd like before picking up the spell, as it will give you full soul. Um, oh gosh, Herm. Overall, we'll be fine. Um, <laughs> um, uh, a bit tough. A bit tough from her right there. Um, jinkies. Uh, that is what we like to call it in the business, a jinkies moment. Um, it was quite tough. I think that, yeah, we got to stick to the anti-curse virtual. Um, okay. Otherwise, this is not going to be going. I think, oh gosh, the uh, double damage there. I think April will die... 10 more times in the arena. I mean, I really and just think that it. his performance will be incredibly subpar. He will miss numerous Shade Souls, waste all of his soul, take two dunks in the spikes, and then that's going to be it. I mean, really, it's going to be it. It's going to be that's unfortunate, true. but that's that's what's going to happen. I just know. 
And then Speed Gaming is going to have to inform us that uh, this channel will be for other uses in the future. That's a black monster because because one runner dies in the overgrown mound. Speaking of which, on this channel, um, coming up very soon, we have an incredible race that all of you should watch between AxeTU, who got the all skills world record yesterday of 49.38, and Monsta, who got who held the all skills record for a very long time of 49.48. This is going to be an incredible race between the top two runners in this category, um, commentated by the lovely Valignatev and Pisces, both of whom are both of who are excellent top runners as well. So you should definitely stay tuned. I know Virgil and I are actually holding a little watch party for that um, yep. because we we attend school together. So we're gonna bring snacks and you know it's gonna be our Super Popcorn, Bowl. Popcorn, let's go. <laughs> just yeah, just an early weekend for us. But wait, I thought it was going to be uh, Somni and Pisces. Did Somni? No, it switched. It's it's okay. Bali now. Nice. Still a very good runner pair and comms pair nonetheless. And yes, April expect has to excellence. Through. And April gets through it. That's why you anti curse folk. Um, one death, sure, sure, but get through with that anti curse and boom, there's Howling Wraiths for April. Um, and so, yep. yeah, we'll be able to continue on towards Dark Deepness. And in the game, we'll see if there's anything she would like to do at this point. I guess we should also... Oh, yeah, Kali did go into the game. I didn't even realize. Let's hope if there is a visit to Myla, the visit is peaceful and one of love and peace and spreading around the hugs. Actually, yes, it looks like Kali I believe is Kali is a known non-Myla killer. This may be a conversation with Elderbug. We'll have to see. Ooh, picking up... Kali, uh, Kali giving us the rando treatment. Now that she has claw, she can go check well. We'll see if she does any of the other important claw checks. Um, maybe <laughs> maybe she's doing the bingo goal of swatting Tiso's shield away. Um, yes. Oh my gosh. A gravekeeper. That is not very polite. Um, you do mm. hate to see it. But yeah, it looks like she will converse with Zelda. Very nice. April heading through this Petra arena. Um, gets through it. We'll see how this hazard respawn warp goes. Yep, that should be on point. Gets the lever. Very nice. Yeah, Kali's mm -hmm. just having a whole conversation around um, Dermoth here. As you know, I would like to disagree with her. I think the uh, better way to check um, the well is to have an infected crossroads with Neo Zero and then pogoing the bench fly until you get up there. I mean, that is in hard logic. It is definitely a check you can take. It involves some significant damage tanks. Um, by the way, for those of you who aren't aware, I really enjoy Hollow Knight Randomizer. I recently indoctrinated Virgil. Kali is a very prominent Randomizer streamer um, yep. and is quite talented. So if you ever have Randomizer questions, feel free to message any of us, or even if you're just interested in a cooperative game. Um, but Kali getting the Hot Spring Bench, that's really important um, in a Randomizer setting. It's just a very valuable bench. It allows you to have fungal waste aspect access. Um, you can do the infection pogo if you don't have movement. It's very nice. Um, but on April's screen, talking about the actual all skills event, um, yeah. April will be heading into Dark Deep Nest with full masks and full soul. So pretty pretty well set up here. Hopefully that dark room will go smoothly. Um, Kali missing go mask shard. You really hate to see skipping that check, <laughs> especially um, on higher logic settings. It's in logic from the get go, and that pogo is very infected setting. I, I, yeah, I gotta say that that is slightly unfortunate. However, I believe Kali might be just trying to check a few things on the bingo board and maybe they have already, they have a intuition of where it might be. So that check is not important for them since they already have all the movement skills and spells. Yeah, Kali perhaps greeting Jennifer. Jennifer's the husk. Hopefully you don't have to kill her. Um, some are required to get her. Um, for soul heading into Grow's mother, but April, yeah, people pointing out April's having a really solid dark deep nest um, and heads out into DB. So, really good work from April there. Um, is able to head on out and go into East End. Um, so that that was quite nice um, way to go on his part. Kali is going to be saving Sly here, so we're going to have to see what sort of shenanigans are going to be pulled here. 
I feel like there was there is gonna be some simple key thing. I'm not sure. Yeah. Perhaps. Perhaps this is an audience with Marissa or something of the like. I'm not sure. Um, but no, wouldn't have the geo. Interesting. Um, but April will go and beat up Hera. This is the final of the dreamers for him. And afterwards, he'll just head into Abyss. Ah, uh, people pointing out um, GG visit as well as Nail Master's glory, both of which are are certainly viable. Um, interesting. Um, yeah, April will absorb. Yeah, and um, I guess April has gotten himself the final dreamer and now we'll be tracing back into the abyss as well. Um, looks like Holly has just visited Sly and got herself the exclusive uh, Nail Master Glory charm. And there is Hornet again on April's screen. Everybody say hi to Hornet. What a lovely, what a lovely girl. Um, Hello, Hornet. We're so glad to see you. Um, it, it looks, looks like, like we're we're having a be a brief conversation with April um as his splits unfortunately broke um but it seems that they'd like to finish so we will cheer him on through this final section um Indeed. but yeah unfortunate that that live split really really did dunk on him there um but yeah we'll cheer we'll cheer him on he's choosing to finish so we'll see him head down to the abyss. Oh, with the time yet? Um, so we'll just—I'll just open the timer on my phone and start timing. <laughs> this can, <laughs> yes. this can work. Great. We'll we'll do some drink phone timing here, and we'll just cheer on April's. Look, April somehow got the Hera in three seconds. Can you believe this? This has got to be a world record. I am incredibly impressed by this man's performance. I mean, really, the fact that you can get all the way to Beast Ten. Glitched runners take notes because April on the all skills NMG run has been able to make it all the way to killing Hera in a mere three seconds. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. New setup for all skills will be coming soon, as this is certainly world record pace. Yep, watch out for that new YouTube video where we explain how all skills is actually the quickest run and the easiest to learn, as most runners will get it down in under 10 minutes. Absolutely. Come to all skills, yes. One sec, let me just check how the combo is going. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, looks like Kali will just be chilling. And ooh, it looks like April is able to restore their timer. So you'll have to see that. We're back yes, on track. that is excellent. So yeah, April will be able to continue down from here. Um, head into beast den i will just let you guys know as a heads up um i'm gonna have to check with speed gaming folks there is a chance that we don't have time for an interview simply because of the fact that axe versus monsta is scheduled to start at 3 p.m so let me just check in with um speed gaming folks yeah i believe uh since their setup starts at 2 50 we have 12 minutes until we probably have to get the channel to those folks, um, in which case we might not have a full interview, but just know that um, lots of congratulations and everything as always. And um, if you want an interview, come to the Hall Guy server. We could do something wacky like that. <laughs> we, can, we can hop in voice. If people are really interested in an interview, I'm sure we can do it on voice in the Hollow Knight Discord. Um, but also, we want to allow people to have um, ample time to watch Axe versus Monster. And also, if we have time for a short interview, we will certainly do that. So, yes, we'll just have to see. Um, but for now, April will be heading back to Hidden Station, um, dropping down into the Abyss, which is always fantastic. You'll love to see it. But. Um, Yes, yeah. we're just gonna go forth Zoom into the abyss. In. Yep. And hopefully the anti comps. Oh, the a little dunk on the spikes. A bit unfortunate there. And 
I'm just gonna anti-curse and say that April will definitely die during the lighthouse climb as he is on 3 HP. For sure. So, yeah, well, we're just getting the interview shenanigans worked out, seeing what's available, seeing what's not. Um, but for now, yes, we will absolutely see a death for April here to the sibling climb. Um, as April pauses game momentarily. Um, okay, so it seems that we will probably have time for a short interview after the run. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't know why April is paused at this point. This um, might be the point where they paused and message the chat. Oh, maybe. that's very true. Yes, this may have been like stream delay. Um, but yes, we're going to be seeing things continue on from this point. Um, but yes, we're gonna we're gonna see this lighthouse climb from April. Um, heading up, getting lots of pogos. Those siblings have plenty of hit points, so you really never have to worry about running out of pogos on them. And yeah, that's a clean lighthouse climb from April. Anti-curse, just as effective as Virgil and I always want it to be. Um, but yes, um, we'll see April heading over to Shade Clip now. Yep, definitely. Dashing through that uh, lake of void, making me wonder if why wouldn't a bath in that lake suffice? And if we, you know, accidentally take a um, take a swim, go go for a swim in the acid lake, will our cloak change back into non-shade cloak variety? But that is um, thoughts with Virgil on another day as we see April quit out here and hopefully using that dream nail to get a bit of early control. Yes, very nice there. Um, picking up the shape cloak, quitting up, you will see that teacher's archives and you might be a little bit nervous, like, oh boy, did April end up all the way back at teacher's archives? No, we're all good. We're at the shape cloak card save and April will be heading out and over to get a Bishri. Yes, indeed. And as we traverse through this ground, um, I guess this is the final upgrade. And for some folks uh, who are interested, sometimes this upgrade is uh, split is titled with a bunch of capitalized A's as the regular uh, race is just on lowercase A's and this one becomes as upgraded as ever, all caps locked. Absolutely. And so, yeah, we'll see We'll see this and we'll see Abyss Climb from April. I don't know if he runs um, Abyss Climb individual levels, but I would assume based on his Path of Pain experience that it will be a pretty good showing on the Abyss Climb. Um, and yeah, then after that, it's just going to THK and bringing it home. So it'll be pretty exciting. Um, Indeed. But there's all the capital A's for April. And uh, fun stuff is on in this room technically if you uh if you do a howling race spell right as you enter the room it does actually work and your character can slowly move to the center of the room before receiving the uh upgraded version however that is slower than crystal dashing your way through so the runners will not be taking that route but any viewers if you want to try <laughs> feel free Yes, so here's April's um, Abyss Climb. Unfortunately, misses that thing a little bit there, but is able to recover very nicely. Um, but keeps going up. This, I believe the world record for this is something in the neighborhood of a high 29 seconds. Um, but yeah. that involves incredible precision and strats you're pretty much not going to see people go for in a race setting simply because of the way that things go um with safety and such because this is part of a larger run um april taking some hits but overall continuing to manage almost to the top here um yep there's that overhang we'll head out and towards thk yep and let's cheer april on on this last segment of the run yes what, absolutely what great and respectable going. resistance yeah
yeah the persistence is absolutely admirable here um you really do love to see it that in a in a setting where it is really easy to just feel compelled to sort of you know throw in the towel forfeit um just sort of get things get things to go to the end and just not worry about it anymore um it is super admirable to see april push through all of these deaths and feel compelled to finish even though this time will be probably above 10 minutes above his pb so yeah you really do love to see it big hollow d's for april here hopefully we see um good thk and by that hopefully less than the 11 deaths that will inevitably happen um as yes. virtual i know yeah definitely and um let's see if april goes for a fun setup here looks like ooh, try to go for a super night didn't happen unfortunately that is a-okay as we into facing the interviewer once again and hoping to get our job Yes, absolutely. So here's our job interview. Um, we are going to be heading in. And yeah, four phases. THK has something in the neighborhood of about 1,050 hit points. Um, and yeah, we're just going to be screaming in his face in re response to all of his interview questions. So wish April luck, hollow Ds all around. And yeah, this is going to be what we hope is a good fight. Yep, there is the first scream and the introductory questions. Let's get yes. this over with. <laughs> Just sort of, you know, at this point, the Hollow Knight's asking for the Knight's basic demographic information. You know, <laughs> where are you from? Oh, the Abyss. You know, what's what's your current job? Oh, running around and, um, you know, trying to break ancient seals on the egg where this interview takes place. Um, that sort of thing, you know, just just casual conversations, making sure that the knight is aware of what the job entails, the various responsibilities. Um, and then we're going to get into some, some more serious matters here with this second scream. Um, you know, things about like, are you really sure you're ready to contain all of the power of the sun? Do you really want this job? Um, because I don't like it that much. That sort of thing. Um, really getting emotionally mm -hmm. vulnerable between these two as part of the interview to just test the knight's resolve. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, we're just going to see continued screaming in the Hollow Knight's face. We are indifferent um, to these ideas. But in this final phase, going to finish that conversation out with, yeah, I mean, I think this job is the right fit for you. We'd love to have you on the team. Um, all that stuff. And then, yeah, look, the Knight has been accepted. GG's to April. Although there were some uh, boss fights that were having a little bit of trouble in Jinky's moment, April was able to get a first try, accept his letter into the job of his dreams, and finish out this on a really good note. Yep, so we're going to be interviewing them. The interview is going to be short and sweet because we have a very exciting race to get to after this one, but we will be dragging them in right now, um, asking them a few questions, yeah. and then, yeah, we'll wrap things up, leave time for Axe Monster to get started. Indeed. Hey, folks, GG's. GG's. <laughs> <laughs> How are you two feeling? Pretty good. All I wanted was a sub hour with no unintentional deaths, and I got it. So I'm happy. GG on and the sub hour. <laughs> I can say both well, GGs. Uh, I, I, a bit exhausted. Uh, it was a bit of a mess. But yeah, I, I'm glad I finished. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you finished too. <laughs> yeah, props props to you on that, on that resolve. You really do love to see it um, pushing through. I mean... <laughs> Because you, you said you're mostly like a, a path of pain runner, right? So boss yeah. fights are less in your wheelhouse. Well, th this time was probably an extreme of that because I don't think I've ever died this many times in any of the prior <laughs> races. So yeah, that was a journey. I still finished yeah. um, like two minutes ahead of my f very first race time, which was like a 120, but nice. it was slower than all the other races. So but. I guess I, I did die like twice to watch a night and I don't know how many times to Hornet too, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you still And Polly, thank you for showcasing those strats. Uh, they were wonderful. <laughs> Just really Thanks. cool and, and you really nailed them. Um, so yeah, they, that was awesome. they, work, they work well for me, so I stick with them. How I which, know which ones? A lot of them are supposed to be harder. Um, 
I think the dash slash spike tunnel. Um, oh my god, you did that! I'm yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then the dark umu. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I didn't get around to practicing comfy. that. Yeah, that one's really comfy. Um, I actually ended up golding Umu by four and a half seconds. We were then... saying we were hoping for an HK block. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> and then I also golded Great Slash by two and a half seconds. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, I actually, I did gold uh, like Shaman Stone and um, Crystal Heart. Those oh, are the nice. only two I remember. But awesome. the problem is I can't see which others I golded because... Um, the thing is, my life split didn't break when I told you that it broke. It actually broke way before that. And it oh, wasn't wow. really <laughs> due to anything that I did. It was, um, for some reason, it just advanced one more split at some point. And I got mm. confused because the splits were like, I think it was like at Monomon. It already showed that I was uh, at Great, Spl uh, Great Slash and it, it huh. had already happened before that. And I was completely confused. And then uh, during the Monomon, uh, no, during the Hera cutscene, I tried to fix it by going like edit splits and uh, trying to see how I uh, how I can like undo a split because I don't know my undo binding. And uh, uh -huh. after I exited the menu, the timer just stopped and then uh, I tried to unpause it, but it apparently hadn't been paused and then it just stopped and I was like, okay, well, oh, I no. guess my life split's broken now. <laughs> oh. So, that yeah. That is very tough. But also, well, uh... Congrats to you both for saving two grubs on your journey through Hollow Nest and <laughs> defeating THK on the first try as well. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Virtual. Um, yeah, so How did I act in my roommate Siri? <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Spanish Siri. Um, if you folks don't have any further shout outs or something, uh, we will wrap it up and give room for Axe and Monster to set up. Yeah, we're, we're a bit late, right? Uh, yeah. Shout outs to Herman Virgil for uh, the always glorious commentary. I haven't watched it yet, but I will. And uh, <laughs> I know you two always do an amazing job. Thank you too for commentating. Thank yeah, and thank thanks, Kali, for uh, sticking uh, and uh, waiting out the additional yeah, no 20 problem. minutes. No, no problem at all. Um, <laughs> shout outs to Nate and Sour for helping me so much with this route, especially Sour has helped me a lot yeah. with strats and sitting in Discord calls with me and figuring stuff out. So. That really helped. I was seated into this tournament with a 109, so having 20 minutes improved feels pretty good. That's awesome. That's really awesome, yeah. And shout out to to chat. Yeah, QD. chat and also to Speed Gaming for hosting the tournament. Yes, oh, as always. I just want to say, despite my uh, relatively poor performance, and I really can't say that <laughs> I did well this race. I, I can't even pretend I did. But um, despite this, I had a lot of fun. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's been fun for sure. That's the it, number one it, thing. it was a fun and messy race uh, for the final <laughs> one, so yeah, I'm I'm not too bummed out. <laughs> let's hope for a great uh, showdown from Monster and X. And, oh, I'm sure yeah, it will be. Let's wrap yeah. it up. All right, and bye so everybody. We'll leave it at that. Have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. I'd say we're, we'll see you on a forthcoming match, but we'll see you in very few minutes um, yeah. to be watching <laughs> Axe Monster. Yep, so definitely. audio, folks, and get hyped for yeah. the big race.